Well, good morning, church. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are a people that God has made, and God has called everything God has made. Good. good. It is a good and beautiful day outside, and, and uh, uh, whether we are worshiping feet apart or miles apart or days apart, we are still bound in the body of Christ together. Uh, by the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And if you are in the sanctuary this morning, would you stand if you're able and, and greet the folks that are worshiping around you? Make sure everyone is welcome to worship this morning. And if you are worshiping with us online, welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with Fenton United Methodist Church out of all the other fine churches in uh, your area or online. And whether you are in the sanctuary or online, you may be seated. If you're on the, in the sanctuary or online, uh, if you are worshiping with us for the first time, we are so glad that you're here and pray God's blessing upon us as we worship Christ this morning. Um, this morning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to say 14 yeses this week. All right, 14 yeses. You got that? Let me tell you where I'm th- what I'm thinking about. In the book of Acts... Paul goes to a city called Ephesus where uh, they have a, a, a goddess there in uh, Artemis. Artemis is their patroness goddess. And uh, the, as a matter of fact, there's a great economy around statues of Artemis, mostly in silver. And Paul goes and he preaches the gospel there. And, and a lot of people become Christians and they throw away their Artemis statues. And they're not buying Artemis statues. And the head of the Artemis Statue Guild gets all freaked out and starts a riot. And says, his, his battle cry is, look, these Christians are turning the world upside down. Now, I get that his apple cart was upset. Uh, and for him, his little world was being turned upside down. But that implies that the world was right side up in the first place, and it wasn't. I believe that sin turned the world upside down. And God has been working ever since to turn our world right side up. And despite All evidence to the contrary, even today. Despite our best efforts, humanity's best efforts, God is still turning the world right side up through the millions of little yeses every day that the people of God say out of grace, out of mercy, out of compassion, towards generosity, towards service, that through our yeses to the opportunities to make real the love of God, we are helping God to turn the world right side up. So this week, 14 yeses, 14 say yes to 14 opportunities, that's two a day, to make God's love real this week. This is our God who is still at work turning the world right side up, turning the world more and more into God's kingdom. As we worship God today, uh, we begin with Ella uh, and Cindy uh, singing, and then uh, Dr. Matt Packer will invite us to worship. Your face is beautiful and your eyes are like the stars. Your gentle hands have healing air inside the scars. Your loving arms, they draw me near and your smile Draw me closer, oh my Lord, draw 
wonderful. Thank you so much for beginning our worship with such a beautiful song. Would you join me in the invitation to worship? Come, beloved of God, let us worship God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We come in faith, believing that God has turned this world right side. We come in faith, believing that God's kingdom will triumph. We come in faith, believing that God is with us. We come in faith, believing that God is love. Come, beloved of God, let us worship our God. For great is our God, and greatly to be praised. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to worship you, thanking you that even faith as small as a poppy seed 
is enough faith to begin a life-shaping journey with you. We ask you now to make the soil of our lives fertile ground to plant our seed of faith, to let it grow deep roots and to make it fruitful. Forgive us when we have allowed the weeds of doubt and worries to overwhelm and smother our faith. Forgive us when we have abandoned our faith in order to justify our words and actions. In this hour of worship, we ask you to renew our faith and deepen the roots of our faith that we may live as children of the faithful God. Amen.
Would you join me in the affirmation of faith printed in your bulletin? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. When we pray, we are not telling God anything God does not, not already know. But what we are doing is building bridges uh, between us and God so that God can come and do some amazing things in us and through us. This is our God, a God who is a bridge builder. Through the cross, through prayer, through worship, through our daily activities, God is constantly building bridges to you and me. And uh, prayer is a way of us opening the door to God and building a bridge towards God. Let's pray. Creator, loving God, on this beautiful winter's day, we come to this house to do the holy and sacred work of worship. To do the holy and sacred work of bringing our lives before you. Not just our joys, not just our concerns, not just our successes, not just our mountaintops and our valleys. We come to bring you our sin and shame and our secrets. We come to name for you that which has been evil in our hearts. We come to name for you, to you, those people who have been heavy on our hearts and those situations that have been at times of, of, of concern and worry and trouble. We come and we, we bring to you our failures. We come and bring to you the things we're proud of. We come to bring to you our strengths and our weaknesses, our temptations, and our victories. We come to praise you for your mercy. We come to praise you for your love. We come to praise you for your grace that despite our best efforts continues to build bridges between you and us. We come, O oh God, to be part of, to be renewed and be part of the, the turning this world right side up so that today this world will look a little bit more like your kingdom than it did yesterday. And tomorrow, through our little yeses, we will make the king, your, this world look more like your kingdom tomorrow than it does today. Oh Lord, as we enter into this time of prayer. In the quiet of these moments, we take time to bring to you ourselves. Lord, free us from the sin that weighs us down. 
and prevents us from following you faithfully. Lord, give us grace and strength to resist the temptation to do evil, to resist the temptation to diminish our faith, to resist the temptation to follow another God. It is with joy and thanksgiving, O God, that we thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whose life and teachings and example showed us a life that honors you, a life of faith and joy and love and mercy and grace and obedience. We thank you for your salvation that has come through Jesus for the new life that has come through his resurrection and for the promise of eternal life. And in these moments, O oh God, we offer you our thanks. Thank you, God, for the many blessings and mercies that we have seen. And thank you, O oh God, for the many blessings and mercies that you have showered upon us that we have not seen. In this time of prayer, O oh God, we also bring to you our anxious hearts and minds giving you thanks for um, the, the great reduction in COVID cases, but still praying for the doctors and nurses and first responders and all the frontline heroes who are at the end of their rope and have been there for a long time and may yet be there for several weeks, months to come. We bring to you our anxieties about a possible war in the Ukraine, we bring to you our anxiety is about winter or about the future, about a loved one who is dying, a child who is making poor decisions, a parent who is sinking into dementia, ten, ten, the tenuousness of a job the direction of our economy, a marriage that is failing. O oh Lord, in the quiet of these moments, we ask that you hear our intercessory prayers of our hearts. Gracious God, you have filled us with your spirit and have given us power to be your witnesses, to be witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be witnesses to your love by sharing your love, by being your love, by our little yeses of compassion and generosity and mercy and service that is part of you turning this upside-down world right-side up. Give us grace, we pray, to see the opportunities to say yes to service and ministry. And give us grace to follow through. For we pray it in the name of the one you sent to be our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And in his name we pray the prayer he taught his followers to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Scripture reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 8, verses 22 to 25, and is found on page 67 of your pew Bibles if you care to follow along or print it in your bulletin. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. 
He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who, is, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obey him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Matt. Prove it. Prove it. It is the demand of the kids on the block to the kid who claims to have an uncle who played in the Super Bowl or who can burp the alphabet. It is the demand of the skeptic when someone announces some new truth claim, like the world is round, or the earth revolves around the sun, or that God exists. Prove it. And some claims can be easily proven. Give the kid a bottle of Coke and see how far he gets through the alphabet. Or show the math that proves the earth revolves around the sun and not vice versa. Some claims are impossible to prove through science or demonstration. Sometimes we have to appeal to faith. But faith can be a sticky thing to which to appeal. Much of our society eschews faith as ignorance or laziness, a crutch for a weak mind. But faith can also be a bit scary and even humorous when you're asked to prove faith. You're at a circus, say, and the ringmaster calls your attention high above in the tent to a man in bright red leotards who is standing next to a bicycle perched on the high wire. And the ringmaster calls out, who believes that the great high wire artist, the amazing Splendini, can ride across the high wire with his bicycle. And of course, there are great applause throughout the big top. Then the ringmaster calls out, Who here believes that the amazing Splendini can ride across the high wire on this bicycle with someone on his shoulders? And there again is great crowds, a great, great loud cheering for the amazing Splendini. And then the ringmaster calls out, then who will be the first to volunteer to ride on his shoulders? Would you raise your hand? <laughs> this is where the differences between belief and faith become really vivid. It is the difference between cheering in your seat and climbing onto the amazing Splendini's shoulders. But at the end of the day, faith is not about believing certain things to be true. Faith is not about assenting to a series of dogmas. Faith is about putting your trust in someone. Reverend William Sloan Coffin wrote that faith isn't believing with 